Modern Warfare 3 is finally here, and it feels like 2009 again with all the Modern Warfare 2 maps, and I'm loving it. But of course, with a new Call of Duty comes a new opportunity to get an upper hand on our opponents, so today we're going over the best graphic settings available in Modern Warfare 3. So these are going to be finely tuned to give you the best competitive experience. So that means that seeing enemies easier, making the map look better, and giving the best visuals possible in terms of frames per second. And we're going to start with on-demand texture streaming. We want to switch this on. This essentially streams high definition textures straight to our console rather than having to download a huge pack or something like that. Then as we come down the list we want to switch off world motion blur weapon motion blur, and film grain. Now these can look great, especially when you're playing campaign, they can make it really immersive. But in multiplayer, when we want to try and get the upper hand on people, we just want to see as clear as possible, so we want these switched off. And the same can be said of depth of field. The automatic setting for this is on, so that makes it when we aim in, we get a little blurring effect around our aim. By switching it off, it means that we can just see the whole environment around our aim at the same time. So there's no chance an enemy can slip by. Just before we get into the rest of the settings, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Sihu, and their new gaming and office chair, the Doro C300. Did you know that the average person spends 2,336 hours per year just sitting down. This is where the Doro C300 comes in. It has dynamic self-adaptive lumbar and back support, meaning it can fit your shape and size and position at any moment. It's no surprise that it's been recommended in a Forbes article. So if you are interested in see who's D300 ergonomic chair, or any of their chairs for that matter, you can follow the link down in the description and comments to their Amazon store and their website. And with the links below, you can get an extra 6% off the Doro C300 and you can find more chair deals on the Sihu events page with up to 50% off. Now let's get back to the settings. Then we come down to Fidelity FX Cast. Now generally there has been a lot of confusion around what this setting actually does. Really it's like a shortcut for our consoles to just sharpen images. Now the downside is that it can actually cause a little bit of frame loss. This is especially the case on older generation consoles. So for me I'm on the Xbox Series X and I find the best setting for me is switching this setting on and turning the strength all the way up to 100. So I've got a super sharp images and it looks fantastic. Now that's not going to be for everybody because not everyone has the same console and not everybody has the same monitor. So unfortunately there's no one answer fits all for this. However, if you are on older generation consoles, I still recommend putting this setting on, but turn the strength down to something between 10 and 30. So you're still going to get that little bit of sharpening, but you're not going to get screen tearing and you're not going to lose too many frames. Then for next gen console players, I recommend 50 and Above. But of course you can always experiment with what works well for you. For 120 hertz refresh rate we want that switched on of course. That just allows us to have 120 frames per second, assuming we've got a console that allows it and a monitor that allows it. So on next generation consoles we can play 120 frames per second on Call of Duty, but you'll only see this setting pop up if you do have a monitor that allows it. For field of view in multiplayer I absolutely use 120. This allows us to see the most environment possible around us, but of course it does come at the cost of frames per per second. A higher FOV means there's more processing to do for our consoles, so if you are on an older generation console where the processor isn't as powerful, you might want to turn your FOV down a little bit, but I still recommend over 100 to get at least a little bit of a competitive advantage. For your ADS field of view, put this on affected. This just means that when you aim in, you're still at the FOV setting that we've just set here, otherwise it'll revert back to 80. For the weapon field of view, put this on wide. This setting makes your weapon look a little bit smaller, so you can see more of the environment. Then for camera movement, Movements, put this on least, which is still 50% on Modern Warfare 3. With the screen shaking less, it increases our chances of seeing enemies or equipment lying around or something like that. For inverted flashbang, I do recommend switching this on, but it is personal preference. But I have found, with the fade going to black instead of super bright, you actually can end up seeing again properly, maybe like a millisecond quicker. Then for brightness, I've got mine on 55. I think overall, Modern Warfare 3 actually does look fantastic, but I always like to tweak the brightness up just that little bit it because of those dark corners and the people that love to sit in them. For safe area, minimize this as much as possible. This just refers to where your hood is, so things like your minimap. By having it slightly closer to the center of the screen, it means that the distance our eyes have to travel from the center of the screen in our aim to the minimap is a little bit shorter, meaning the chances of missing an enemy or something like that is reduced. Now we're still not quite done yet, we do want to head over to interface. Now we do have subtitles here, and on Warzone I would recommend everybody switching them on. Just 
because there are some audio cues that you might not quite hear, but are very important, and obviously they'll show up in subtitles. So that can be something like an enemy putting down a claymore or something like that. Now in multiplayer, that is still useful information, so you can still switch subtitles on, but because some games are so chaotic, your screen's just gonna be full of text. So for me personally, I am actually gonna switch this one off on multiplayer. Then we want to go down to color customization. Now for the hood color palette, that's kind of up to you, it's not super important, but I do like Deutronopia. For me, the blend of colors just stands out that little bit better, but the key setting here is the color filter setting. Now obviously on console, we don't have all the options that PC players do, but our next best thing are these color filters. And I personally would recommend color filter 2, although the filter 3 is also very good. Now these just make the color stand out that little bit more. So if there are loads of greens and browns overlapping each other, which does happen on Call of Duty a lot, it just means that we may be able to see those differences a little bit better, which often can just be an enemy on top of a background. So that is going to be super useful for us. Then we want to put the target filter on both and the intensity all the way up to 100. So they were all the important graphic settings on Modern Warfare 3. Of course, you can tweak even more on your monitors, but I may do that in a future video. But for now, I hope you're enjoying the new game and be sure to check out the rest of these settings videos for Modern Warfare 3 and goodbye.